Alright, so now I'm working on, finally, placing our wheel brake. Uh, remember we were trying to bang that pin out, try to get the whole steering assembly out. Well, I got the little cotter pin. Took me about an hour and a half. Here's the rebuild. This, this, the pin probably goes through here. There's a bushing and a washer. Fingers crossed it should go pretty well. I need to do this before I start putting my steering back together. That kind of buttons up the back of the boat um, as kind of everything else is done in there. So that would be big because then it's like move on to other disaster in here. Uh, yeah, so that'd be nice to at least get one area sort of set. As Bill works on replacing the wheel brake, I am doing some editing back at the apartment here in Penasco, Mexico. The countdown until my upcoming mastectomy surgery is on to finish as much of our refit as possible before we hit the pause button for a while. I was trying to get this thing threaded out. This is like kind of sticky. So I think a lot of my problem is pushing. It's just cracked. I think that's why it was so sticky previously. One of our friends here, Dave, has extra chain for steering. So the cable's are brand new, might as well replace the chain. I've heard of a couple inches of the chain failing. Calico Sky's steering system is largely original, making it almost 40 years old. A portion of it is still in good working order, but the parts more commonly prone to failure are being replaced, including the brake, steering chain, cables, and cable clamps. No, no. <laughs> Trying to get this piece of the brake on, you just need like child hands to do this though. Um, basically, how it works is this pin goes straight through. Oh, you see the pin? The wheel brake that we always use, this pin here. Oh, that's called a brake. Yeah. It went into a bushing, which I pressed in here, mm -hmm. through one side, <clears throat> which is on the starboard side, which is not threaded, it went straight through. And then the hard part is you need to get this pin that's going through here to thread into this which is a threaded piece. Okay. The problem is I just don't have, I can't feel when yeah. it's lined up because I can't get my hand next to it. That's why I'm here. But you have small hands, you might be able to do it. I mean, obviously I could, if I want to go crazy, I can remove the, all the gear shift and the throttle linkages and then remove all this, but we just got the brake on. Yeah. We can then put Let's our new see. chain on and close this up. Can you feel the pin? Yeah. Is that hole of that brake lined up with the pin? No. Can you feel, is it possible for your feel? So it doesn't want to like, is the pin not far enough in? Okay, hold on, let me try. You might have to angle it this way. Yeah. I mean. Let me start. Yeah, I don't. Know, I don't know when it's gonna. Like I'm spinning it. Spinning it. Oh wait, stop. Bring it in, I guess. Like bring it, like not in. Oh, sorry. Screw it. The other way. It's not on. It's my finger. Oh, I feel something now. That's okay. my finger. Bring it out? Yeah, like maybe. Maybe bring it out. I think it's gotta be angled in. Bill yeah. just dropped the pushing and basically everything down the, the, down the hole. Provoke. So now we have to take apart I the can't whole get it out. steering like system again. Hole. I'm gonna just try and stick my hand down there and see. Yeah. Well, maybe you have more, so you need to get two fingers in. Yeah. I can't yeah, I might be able to. So you see, you see those messenger lines? The white. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. the, so there's a big hole like kind of in the center of that metal plate. There's like three pieces of plywood and a metal plate bolted together. Okay. Yeah, there's a big hole. Stick your finger in there and you'll feel. This hole? Yep, there's a big hole. There's no string in it, right? There's, I think there's one forward of it. This hole? You feel anything in there? Yeah. I need to get it out of there. I can get two fingers in through this hole. Can you feel the things? Yep. I hear it. I think you to line it up and then you'd have to flip it so the hoop is like... The, the only thing is I... My fingers are so short. Oh. I, alternatively, I can just try to take those bolts off and lower it down and get in there. Yeah. This is why, in theory, it sounds really simple. Let's just change the brake on this thing, but there's no access and I dropped it all the way down to the bottom. And I can't leave it there because it might shave our cables. So. so the wheel brake was something that I thought was really important to fix because the way it, it has been for the past, I don't know, 
year or two, the brake is too tight for me to unlock the wheel. So unless Bill does it, I'm not capable of doing it, which I think is a safety problem. Not a screwdriver Are you there. serious? <laughs> that's wonder, amazing. I wonder who dropped that in there. I wonder how long that's been in <laughs> I there. I don't know. Maybe it was me. Maybe <laughs> Um, one. Anyway, what I'm trying to say, oh nice. And here's two. What I'm trying to say is that if you needed to move the boat quickly, you have to be able to unlock the brake. That's the first step to being able to move the boat. And if I had to do that and I can't, I think that that's dangerous, potentially. Um, and so, it never used to be a problem, but over the years, it's... What, what actually happened to this thing? It got it seated, it seized up because of uh, the... I would actually say the problem actually wound up being the, the bushing, that black thing I handed you. Yeah, the bushing. That actually got cracked inside there, and it was seizing the brake. Okay. So that's, that's a new one, but the white one had cracked and gotten jammed in there. So it was yeah. actually making it really hard to turn. So right now, it actually spins freely. You, the wheel is not locked at all. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Got it, got it. So yeah, basically, you gotta be able to lock your wheel and unlock your wheel. Every member of the crew <laughs> that is responsible for the vessel has to be able to lock and unlock the wheel, in, in my opinion. Bill's opinion too. I mean, we just have a lot of things on the list. And <laughs> this is the first step in rebuilding our steering gear. Yeah. And, um, Maybe I shouldn't even bother putting this up too much because I might drop it back down here. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Still when you go it's present. Okay. Where was I? <laughs> Old. So this is the new one. And this is the old one. So dry fit it. See, it's closing up. That's like how the brake works. Yeah. And then a cotter pin goes through there when it's all done. So I think I think this bushing maybe it was too far in last time. So I think I'm gonna let let, let it out a little bit more. The washer's on. Mm -hmm. Okay, let go. Hold on, make sure, make sure it's like very on. The first step is the easy part: getting the washer onto the pin. So now the next step is this piece has to go on the screw as well with the washer behind it. Put it on and then I'm going to knock it through. So th don't let the washer fall, obviously. It's on now. Okay, can I push it through? Am I going? No, I don't know. Pull it up? Can you pull it up? Can you pull it up? It's in there, okay. Yeah. Okay, so now I have to somehow, I think it has to go in a little further. I'm gonna give it a little knock, you ready? Are you ready? Yeah, okay. Okay. Turn between. Just have to go in. Because now is now can you stick your hand on the left side? The port side and see like can you get this threaded on you think? Like is there enough screw underneath? You think it has to come further this way? Yeah. Hold this, I'll take this cap off. Ready? Mm -hmm. On here. Yeah. Maybe it needs more. Maybe it's too much of an angle. Maybe it needs to be more. Yeah, the angle part. doesn't feel right. So pull the whole thing out. I'll hammer it in a little more. Uh, all right. Yeah, it's on again. Oh, I think it's coming through. 
Oh, now it's this other guy. Wait. You want me to grab it? Is that going? Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Okay, uh... I guess you're clear now. Oh, yeah, I see it. Sweet. That would be cool. Nice. Good job, honey. <laughs> Thank God for little hands. You did it. I don't think I'd ever be able to do that. I was trying to get this one on, on this side, and this was the one that we put on first, and so it's now, you can see when we dry fit it, how it was squeezed together, and they're now on, and we can continue to assemble, squeeze them up. So, assemble, yes. why are they so hard to squeeze together? So we didn't get it on film because we were both busy doing it, but. I'm not sure this is actually. Yeah, it's kind of, I don't know if it's seated right, but yeah. we got the metal plate um, on the two gold brakes, and legs. brakes, legs of the brake, and now we're trying to screw it down. Um, unsure whether it's perfectly aligned. Okay, so now you can see the sprocket's moving. There we go. Two hundred wheel brakes on. It works. Go. Woohoo! We just grabbed some coffee, iced coffee. I know this crappy lighting's gonna annoy me when I go to edit this, but um, <laughs> we're we're in a rush, like as per normal, because we're just like really have to make more progress. Um, since we have so much left to do on the interior, so things are just taking too long. Yeah, things coffee. are just things are taking too long. <laughs> Um, so it's like three o'clock. We're hoping to get this done today so that tomorrow we can, um, Bill has to fix the heater duct and there's just, it's like that order of operations thing. So, okay, here we go. We finally got the wheel brake installed, uh, which means we can move on to installing our steering cables and chain. This is a 10 year old cable and we're replacing it because of these meat hooks. Um, I do check this cable periodically with the tissue and some oil, just to look for these. Uh, this was actually inside the quadrant, uh, and the reason I was able, I found it this time is because the quadrant is disassembled for dropping the rudder. This was replaced 10 years ago when we lost uh, steering in New York Harbor right in front of the Statue of Liberty. So it's 10 years, so I think a 10 year maintenance is probably pretty good. And for anybody who doesn't know, you can't actually stop in front of the Statue of Liberty. You're not supposed to. <laughs> so that was problematic, but anyway. So, so this is going, this cable, once I saw this, and it's already out, it's been 10 years, it's time for the maintenance to start on this. So while we're at it, um, our friend Dave on Kabu had extra chain. Okay. Is it a hollow? Yeah. That one? Yeah. It's more like a roll pin. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, sweet. sweet. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Well, this is going to remain on board. I'm going to clean it up with degreaser and keep it as a spare. The boats that had lost chain, Mike on Alegria, he lost his uh, chain uh, steering his, uh, from the steering wheel on his first overnight passage. Totem has lost theirs, so I figure while I'm in here, the binnacle is open, just replace it. Yeah, and have and a totally have a brand spare. new steering from rudder. To just, the whole system yeah. has been overhauled. Rather than paying the $300 Edson wants for replacement cables and that whole thing, we got it for a total of $91 from Arizona Wire Rope, which is just a rigging shop uh, for machining. Same 316 stainless, uh, so you can save a buttload if you do it yourself. They come uh, in two one-foot lengths, and this is the center piece, and the center, the center of the chain is important because that's what centers the rudder. So this has to be centered. You have to have this centered, with the wheel centered, because it goes over the sprocket here, the chain. Uh, right. and the rudder has to be centered. So you have to get everything in alignment so the steering could go stop to stop uh, and work on the rudder. So I went ahead and sharpied the center of the chain so I know where that is. And then I'm gonna go and connect the cables and hopefully hook it back up. And this bearing has to go in here. This is the clevis pin, this pin I'm pushing in. Uh, Put a new cotter pin in. That's one side. Now we're gonna flip her around.
The other thing that was pretty nasty is the cable clamps that go on the quadrant end. They're obviously past due for <laughs> replacement. So the sprocket is what is attached to our wheel. And it's basically like a, it's almost like a bike sprocket. Like it's no different. So when I spin the wheel, that spins the sprocket. And the sprocket then spins the chain. Okay. And then the chain spins the cables. And then the cables attach to the quadrant, which either side pulls or like pulls and moves the rudder. Then there's shivs, which are essentially blocks underneath the side of the wheel that divert the cables to the quadrant. So the, the cables go straight down our pedestal and then aft towards the quadrant. So when I'm talking about the shiv, it just redirects the, the wire. So what we're gonna do now is run these cables through the shivs underneath the cockpit sole and to back towards the quadrant, uh, pull the slack out, and now we can put the chain on the sprocket and then we can start connecting the steering system back up. Why'd you put that messenger line in? Just so we don't get them crisscrossed and we don't have the rudder moving backwards when we do this. This is our helm, centered helm mark. The rudder is straight down below. Uh, into the back locker. Uh, should we do the other one now? Okay. okay. So, let's just, because we don't want this grease to go on the uh, new brake we just installed. <laughs> It's not like it's not a high speed thing, a wheel, but it's just to keep things moving and anti corrosion. So that's probably enough, or that two feet. Oh yeah, you're only doing a two foot portion. I'm gonna go down below and do the rest. Right. Oh, you tell me you're ready. Okay, I'm starting to pull. Okay, so you're putting on the new cable. Yep, I'm just taking the messenger off. Slip it through like this, back on one itself. Ow. That's the quadrant, okay. The circles are quadrant. The cables go on this, this guideway here, mm -hmm. they come off the shivs underneath the floor, and then the cables move the rudder, which is the rudder shaft, obviously, that's bolted to and clamped on. So that's what the cable, this cable clamp, so I want to put it through itself and then clamp this on, like that. So that's what holds it, and there's gonna be double, obviously, when we're done. Mm -hmm. But the, the other eye is over here, so I have very little access to it. And I also don't know like what state our cables are in right now, because the rudder's all the way over, so I kind of have to get this cable through, guess the tension, center it, and hope it works. Okay, so that was ultimately a fail. Um, the chain came off the sprocket uh, when we turned the wheel. It's all the way. That's hard over? Yeah, it's all the way. Yeah. Oops, out. something slipped. Now it's a learning opportunity. Yeah, so but we're leaving now because it's 6.30 or something. Oh, I forgot about the gate. And, I can do it. Um, you sure? Yeah. And it's actually Brooke's birthday. <laughs> and even though we're all like, Working long hours right now, um, especially Brooke and Gary in particular. Um, we're gonna take a break to celebrate for her tonight. Um, so we're gonna take a shower and get ready for that. Tomorrow we will continue the saga. The, the saga. Um, but the good thing is we know what we're doing now. I think I have a better understanding of it, yeah. I mean, I still screwed up, I think. <laughs> it's always possible. There's some oh, I've never been able to get this oh. on film. Let me do the old zoom, Rudy, and then this is the military presence that they have. Not something I've ever jumped to like film and throw it in their face. Cause, like our camera has this huge um, dead cat on it and stuff. Dead cat on it, but I mean, there's like quite the presence here in Pinasco. Yes. I have a grease cup, oh. so same thing. Same for later. Like the PFT. Right. Uh, your birthday though. Yeah, 
going to resume. Uh, figuring out why this chain came off the sprocket, so I got to go down and uh, loosen the cables, try to pull it back up. I got to recenter the chain because I don't see the center mark now. Um, yeah, and I don't even remember honestly now if we filmed it. I think we did, but like so. <coughs> fell off the sprocket. The chain fell off the sprocket. Uh, yeah, which might get us back to square square one here. Hopefully not, but we're about to find out. Okay. Got it. Yep. Wheel centered. You can't really have a perfect center in the sense that this, this spoke. Yeah. This spoke will never be able to line up because if we move our center to here, then it's just gonna be offset to this side slightly. So we're just gonna mark on our wheel. We're the true center. So this is truly centered. So now Bill has to basically redo everything he did yesterday. Yep, but I think I've better method this time. Yeah, because he's already done it once. So right now the cables are They're cable. Slacked. What are those things called? Cable clamps. Thank you. Cable um, clamps. There's gonna be a set of two per strand uh, when I'm done, but I'm obviously just gonna kind of dry fit it and make sure everything works before I go and tighten this up. Um, so I just ran this other cable through again because it fell off when I adjusted the chain, and now I gotta get this cable clamp situated. Um, Turn to starboard. Okay, starboard is this way. Okay. 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 good? I think so. Nice. Ooh. That went way faster this time. Yeah, I think I know what I'm doing this time. I'm just hitting the stops. I don't know why that chain fell off last time, so I'm just... Oh, I probably shouldn't put too tight because I'm going to loosen my cables. Yeah, because you're not all the way in, right? Like I don't have, have two clamps on. I have two out of four. See that? When I switch over from pull, they see what it seems like when I go from like it's fine under load, but when we go from the middle, it's a little bit of slop. Oh, like that chain kind of loose? Yeah, I mean, like cable. Yeah, so I might need to tighten one of the sides a little more. But I mean, that's working, so I yeah, think it's, I think it's, it's that port side one is a little side, yeah. so there's an adjustment. Oh, that's, that's hard over. Right? That's centered. Let's start with this little bit, see? Finally. See. Eat and keep eating. And persistence. So the four clamps are on, two per side. Okay, I have some good, pretty good tension on the cables. Um, yeah, I think the last thing, a few things I do is like pack these grease fittings. Uh, that's just to lubricate the bushing. See that that little, little more marine grease in there, and squeeze into the surface. This is like our bushing surface. Mm -hmm. Um, I gotta fix our heater. And then we have to grease the rest of the... Grease the rest of the steering cables, yep, to the shiv. I can't believe you got all four of those on. Yep, and I think I have to cut these tails, because they're gonna make noise, so I need to actually need the grinder and a battery. Just go cut the cables. Maybe put your headlamp on? Uh, on. Since you have your sunglasses on. Cool, like that. greasing the two upper and lower rudder bushings. The grease goes into these grease cups, and when they are tightened onto the bushing, the grease coats the bushing. Spinning our steering, trying to work the grease around the boat bushing. I might give it a little squeeze now too, just to... 
hear something? That squeak. Oh, is my... oh. Hmm, that's new, huh? What do you think that is? That's the kind of thing that's gonna drive me insane off track. No, yeah, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta fix that. <laughs> Oh god. You know me. I'm gonna just give it a little squeeze because I just like. Yeah. Put a little more in. Where's the other one? A little more in. Still doing it. Something in the binnacle. Oh no. It might go away. It's gotten better already, see? I mean, the rudder never moves. It's extreme. The squeak went away, but this project did not. Would you believe that we're still not done? We'll roll the highlights reel of the finish, which includes reinstalling the autopilot and surrounding cabinetry. Okay. So, Bill's just informed me that the purpose of this cabinetry is to prevent stuff from falling into the steering steering quadrant which makes makes sense because i was starting to wonder why we were torturing ourselves in this manner but i love knowing that this cabinetry serves a very important purpose very muy importante it's turning into a boat project huh yeah Oh, bit me. Well, one additional injury. Can you feel close to that thing? Hole again. Come on now. Yeah, so I was making sure the rudder stop, which is underneath on the quadrant, um, has to stop before the rudder can jam. This piston in really will damage the autopilot. So the pressure's not on the pilot, it's on the stops. Okay. So let's see will the autopilot work. How about right? I'd say so. 425, that only took a whole day. <laughs> no. Well, we did our, we, we, we worked now. We worked this morning. This whole area, we could put our gear back in. Yeah, the this actually feels really good. I mean, the boat could just steer itself, that's pretty important. Yeah. I think I, need to add, I, think I spilled some hydraulic fluid, so I gotta.